Yo, in today's video, we'll be looking at creepy and strange TikToks that are going to make you question everything. Hmm. Ring cameras be catching so much. Which I think it was. It's a UAP. Hmm. That's what it was. Oh. What's going on here? Oh, my, 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 my. Okay, I do not know what's going on right now. I heard a noise. I come outside. There's sirens blaring. And I see this huge trail in the sky. Yes? The Capitol Hill Police? Man. Hmm. Everywhere, what's going on? It's a lot of police cars. And it's quiet, as if they're waiting for something. It's midnight right now, and there's this huge trail like something crash landed. What the heck is that? What is this? Expecting something, preparing for something. Look over here, let's walk over here. Come on, come on, come on. let's walk over here. What do you guys think that could have been? Something definitely happened. Look, 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 There is a fire right now that's burning in Wyoming that's about the size of two Disney Worlds, three Manhattans, and two San Francisco, mm. and no one is talking about it. Because mm. this just came to my FYP, because I didn't see it in the news, because someone was mentioning it, saying like there's a fire in Wyoming that's about 50,000 acres. And the residents, they have having to evacuate their homes. And the firefighters, they are pretty much fighting for their lives because they have high winds and difficult terrains to work with. Why is no one talking about this? I didn't see this in, in the news. Mm -hmm. I'm just hearing about this right now. Have you guys heard about this fire in Wyoming? Oh, my gosh. I feel so bad because just imagine having to lose your home or evacuate your home due to fire. Mm -mm -mm. Praying for the people in Wyoming because it seems like everyone right now is having a tough time. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Why is this so hard for people to understand? The world as you know it is over. It's done. The power grid thing is the thing that scares me the most. I don't think people have any concept. What a power outage does? Yeah. Whole population's gone in about three days. 90% of yeah. it. And desperation kicks in, there won't be any food. Do you think that you just fucking turn the faucet on and water comes out? No, it's run by power. And so when the power goes out, there goes your water. The power grid that we have right now, transformers and stuff, oh, are made in China. All they have to do is push a button and it's over. It gets cut, it's not coming on, and you're gonna fucking die. The people fighting to make the air safer to breathe east of Atlanta mm. is now dead. 
Kenny Johnson died on Tuesday, moments after he testified about the negative impact the BioLab fire has had on his life and his community. Johnson started complaining of shortness of breath, and then he passed out. He served as the Rockdale Soil and Water Conservation District State Board Chairman. Now that's crazy. Um, there is different, there's cities underground, there's um, warehouses underground, there's actual homes underground. People build these tunnels and they've built them for decades. There's a lot of elite celebrities. They go down there for parties. Underneath the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, California. I was there for a cock party. We walked through the museum, through the garden area, and employees led us to underground tunnels. We had to uh, take an elevator and stairs. Uh, you ha we had to be led. There is no way that you can just walk into a tunnel. There, the entrances and the exits are in your face, but there's no way that you can just walk through tunnels. There's, you'll get stuck. You'll um, go deeper and deeper. You won't be able to come back out because it's hard because the tunnels run all different directions for miles and miles and miles and miles so if you go down the wrong one you'll get stuck and it's confusing to turn back around and get back to where you're going so you have to be led in and out i think people assume that when you get all right y'all so we're outside and my kids run up to me talking about oh the spider wrote its name of course i'm like no it didn't so I was like, go take a picture of it, show me. So one of the kids took a picture with the phone and came back and I'm thinking like it's a nameplate. Like you know how people got nameplates for their necklaces or anklets? I thought it was one of those. That's a big spider. Cause it looks like it right No, It's it's the web. It's literally, there's nothing attached to the web. It's just the web. So now we have spiders writing in cursive. That's insane. What was seen blazing across the United States last night just so happened to be seen in four different states. Mm. There are hundreds of residents in the D.C. area alone that heard and saw the same exact thing that I saw last night. But yet, no local police departments have anything to say about it. And apparently, whatever crashed just so happened to crash specifically around Annapolis. Apparently, rumor has it that parts of a satellite were falling across the sky overnight. I don't know how much I should believe that especially considering how I feel about satellites and space in itself. But see, here's the thing, right? Now I'm starting to get DMs from people that are saying that there's multiple crash sites. I drove all over Washington, D.C. today just to try to find the area of which I thought it might have landed at. And apparently there were a lot of them seen overnight. And when I say a lot of them, I mean like 20 of them. I mean, I've had thousands of DMs today telling me about their own experiences mm. of seeing these things blaze through the sky. I don't know how many people are lying because, you know, you would think at least one or two people would have some type of video, right? But every single one of these reports are ranging from 8 p.m. the night before to 4 a.m. the morning after. So that makes me believe that there were numerous objects that fell out of the sky, which would make sense. I tagged a specific guy below because apparently he's the only one on TikTok that just so happens to have a video. Now, it's not really a video. You can just see the street going across the sky, but that's exactly what I saw. But the object coming across the sky, leaving a streak. But there's also one that's from a woman's ring doorbell, right? That happened at 3.20 a.m., right? And she lives in the Washington, D.C. area as well, which is exactly when I just so happened to see that object blazing across the sky. And there's another video with a guy that lives in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it has him talking about how he saw the object blazing across the sky, but that was around 3 a.m. And then I have a shit ton of people in Ohio that are saying that they saw the object blaze across the sky around midnight to 2 a.m. So I really don't know what to believe. My mind's in a spiral. I've done all the investigative work I could possibly do today. Who knows? What I do know, though, is that the people would probably be the last to know. I just know what I definitely saw, and that was one of the biggest objects I have ever seen falling from the sky. Yo, who or what is it? So everybody know Paul Goodlow from the Weather Channel, right? So I'm in my bed watching a hurricane. I'm a Florida native in Tampa right now waiting for a hurricane. 
uh, Milton and make landfall. So Paul is in Clearwater Beach, right? And I'm also on TikTok at the same time looking at this TikTok and walking through Clearwater Beach. And Paul is there and he's um, kind of portraying that the beach is loaded with trash. And he stands in front of a pile of debris and he's kind of insinuating that the whole beach is full of trash and debris. So there's this TikToker, and I text and I hit him up. I say, bro, Paul Goodlow is on Clearwater Beach right now. He's like, oh, snap. So I'm going to turn around. And I was like, bro, he's on the pier. He's like, where's he at? He's on the pier. So he walks back around. He see Paul going live. And I screenshotted the video. So y'all check this out. He catch Paul in a lie. There's no debris on the beach. Watch it. He's right there. Oh, shoot, we got to be quiet. There's Paul right there. This is wild. Maybe we'll say hi to him afterwards. My chat's crazy. So that's him, Derek. Oh my God, that's crazy. Should I just shout out? Let's go, Paul. Let's go. No, he has like a security guard or something. Right there. It's a security guard. That's Paul. No, they have security. They're not letting anybody run down there. I'm gonna wait till he goes off camera though and say hi. Shake his hand or something. You'll send a line if I get on the news. Oh God, that might be worth it. Maybe I'll walk underneath the pier and go behind the trash pile. Should I walk behind the pier? They gonna get tackled. I don't want to get sand on me. <laughs> no, it's like the beach is like lime. There's trash all behind them. They like staged this. I feel like. So like, what does it look like behind him? Because there's a lot of garbage behind him. So this is why I'm confused. Do, I mean, on the news, guys, is there just a lot of garbage behind him? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's, I feel like they staged this. No, they're, they're, dude, that's like garbage. That's like garbage, garbage over there. I'm gonna wait till he goes off camera. Is he done talking? He's done. He's definitely staged. There's their van. Oh, they're stationed up for sure. They're ready. Yeah, this guy has like a security guard. But see, this is what I'm talking about. There's no trash on this side of the beach at all. There's like no trash over here at all. But there's like a pile of trash right behind his crap. But you guys saw it on my TikTok, right? I mean, there's like a literally fake fucking trash on the beach. And you guys saw it here. I mean, there's just... No, I know he went off air. Like as soon as the camera went off, like he like walked away. But what I'm saying is like, you guys saw his camera view, but like if you look on the beach right here, this is the pier on this side, you're telling me there's absolutely no trash. Like, come on. Milton's supposed to hit here at like two. That's like what everybody said. But whoever just watched that, if you see that pile of trash, that shit's staged. That shit's crazy. Can't trust the news, man. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe Bro, watch out, bro. What's up, though, y'all? What y'all got going on? Hey, Ma. On the ground now! They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Get on the ground! Oh, man, that's my little brother, man! Get on the ground man, now! That's my little brother, man! No, they didn't just do that. They didn't just do what that. What the hell is my little brother, man? They didn't just do that, bro.
Bro, y'all just shot my little brother. They didn't just do that, bro. And they just pulled off. Bro, y'all just shot my little brother, bro. They didn't just do that, bro. Bro. Bro, they didn't just do that, bro. Bro, they didn't just do that, bro. Bro. They didn't just do that, bro. Bro. Yeah. Bro, I know they didn't just do that, bro. But they just shot my little brother, bro. Get him, bro. Y'all just shot my little brother. Bro, you just shot my little brother. Bro, y'all just shot my little brother. Friday, September 19th, 1941. Display of the Aurora Borealis sweeps northwestern skies. Article here talks about many are being led to believe that. Uh, has something to do with national defense. So they were asking questions about doing night tactics and things like that. Um, it says right here that it interrupted lots of calls. It says right here, which I thought was interesting. For the capricious flickerings in the firmament played hob with wireless and cable connections practically around the globe and disrupted radio and telegraph services throughout much of the United States. Mm. The mm. firmament played hob. Then down here, it was saying here that major communication systems reported the magnetic storm for such is the term that scientists use to describe the apparent cause of the aurora borealis that struck communication from Europe as far east as Latin America, except for cables from London, which continued to flow uninterrupted. The staff of the New York Cables Desk of the Associated Press had one of its quietest nights since the war began. Down hmm. here, telegraph companies had their services affected seriously. For the first time, such a condition hit the Trans-Pacific facilities of the Bell Telephone System. And then down here, most scientists believe that the Aurora Borealis is a manifestation of sunspots. The sunspots themselves appear to set up magnetic currents emanating earthward in a manner which slashes communication lines. This cross-current effect sometimes set up currents of considerable voltage in landlines. Hmm. Interesting that that was all happening way back and Here is knowledge. So you may Antimon, eat of its fruit. Etimon, this is third grade stuff. Third grade stuff. Etimon. Etimon is to a word what Adam is to the building block of anything else. Anybody, anywhere around the world, any scholar, doesn't matter no, what language they're dealing with, right? Know these rules. These rules are not taught to our people because we've held to servitude uh, caste. The language that we usually use is called connotative linguistics, which is introduced into societies where people are held to servitude so that their own language traps them. Exactly. Mm. That's Do you what understand? I'm talking about. Now, and That's I agree. What I'm talking about. So it's important to under. This is why I'm telling you. The reason why I say Oxford, because all scholars around the world. They have all the dictionaries, but they particularly have Oxfords. Now, because Oxfords always, by rule, go into the etymon, whereas some of your lighter or cheaper dictionaries don't, will give you classification, you will give you classification and will give you bracketed etymon, but it will be limited. Now listen. Now this is a rule. Now look at this side. No, no, no. Wait, no. I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna show you a simple rule. And this is what we was talking about. Like, um, I can take a dictionary, an ordinary dictionary, right? Laws of hardcover and before 1960. Right. And take a child. As a matter of fact, I could take a a, a, a a child third grader if he's decently educated. They don't have to be smart. Right? And just ask them, how many parts of speech are there? Most adults wouldn't answer, but a child said there are eight parts of speech. Then we tell the children, what is it that other children learn that our children don't learn that makes our children have the disadvantage? Which is why we talk out of frustration instead of the facts. 
because we're, we feel attacked. You understand? Because we're missing a part, right? Now, the first thing you do when you look up a word in a proper dictionary is you go to the part of speech which will come directly after the word, which will be abbreviated or either written out in italics. The first thing you do with the word is, is plug it into its proper mother or matrix. That's the first rule in linguistics, grammatication, orthology, morphology, ETC, all over the planet. It ain't some European stuff and don't apply to Africans because we gave it to them. Those are rules in language. That's what I'm talking Third grade about. grammar. Now, so the first thing you do when you look up the word black, right? You want to see right after it is going to have A, D, J, which means what? Adjective, which means it's not a noun, which means it's not a person, place, thing. Wait a minute. Not a person, place, thing, or idea. First classification. Then it gives you the etymon right after it in brackets, in square brackets. It'll be O, E, which means Old English. Then it'll have derived from, oh, listen first. I'm listening. I'm just oh, let them learn if you're not going to learn. O, High German. And in its original form, it means pale. Okay. Now that wait a minute, wait a minute, let me explain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Repeating now scholars make right. now no, scholars know these things, which is why they have secret societies, and you have people in power positions, whether they're boule, that means guys on our side, or Europeans that are blue house masons or York masons, etc. They all know these same rules, but the dummies are given belief systems of what you call connotative linguistics. Connotative linguistics is really is where they introduce what you would call uh, uh, stepchild definitions that that in language and contract are absolutely off the mark and will cause failure, but are accepted loosely in communities. But in law and in standing and in contract, you would fail all the time. You understand? Right. Which makes us incompetent. Right. Now. Black is an adjective. It's an old English word. So then you go to the appendix of any dictionary and it'll take you to the 1400s, which means in that form, in that form, it doesn't go past the 1400s. So all scholars know when you go past 1400s that that word in this form does not exist. Okay. Are we clear? Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me say. Mm. You know I ain't the type to walk. Mm. You gotta stop. You gotta stop it. What's really funny is nobody's figured out your Jaguar. Right. Mm. Mm, the funny thing about that part is I am. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I am actually her. Mm. And then they're going to be like, oh my God, we knew it was her. We knew it was her. We knew it was her. Yes. Clones. Mm, clones, clones. One plus two plus three plus four. So, real quick, can we ask, um, uh, Hitty? Orlando, just chill out. Hold on one yeah, second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hitty, Hitty's arrested. Oosh, gosh, whoosh, wash. Yeah, Orlando, what does that mean to you, Jaguar? What does that mean to you? Because, again, Well, is... I'm Orlando. Okay, I'm And right. he's now Jaguar. Right, so, there's a what? Let's talk. Hitty's <laughs> arrested. Okay, so what? Okay, so 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 basically, what's going on is you're talking about my friend still, and then you're still talking about her, and then nobody can act like the elephant in the room is not gonna be talked about. Like, you know what I mean? Like, my nigga didn't do. Sh it's two different ditties. You have Jalil White. Yo, bro, you got you definitely have Jalil White, but Kim Porter is the real puff. Y'all don't be listening, but I hear it. But she said that first. Say. But she said that first, though. When she said Kim Porter was the real puff, nobody's nobody's listening. Nobody's hearing it. Or like that's not my business. My business is little Hollywood stuff. Orlando's business is little Hollywood stuff. Jaguar's business. It's what she's been through in the music game. What she's been through on the high levels of the music game. What people want to do and what people see inside of the music game. That's what she's been through. That's what my mother has been through. I've only been through the television aspect of what people can do if you allow them to. It's two different levels. Mm. Hmm.
Yo. What is it? Golden Copper Book. and let it out. That's a pew pew in his hand. If I say it, they're gonna take my video down so I can't say it. That's what that is. Sarasota, Florida. Where this group of white people profile this black teen. What's going on, buddy? Nigga, no brother. You live here or you have a friend you're visiting here, that's fine. Let I'm not know. in front of your house. You're, you're actually house. You're, you're actually you're actually you're actually following me. <laughs> I can walk around in my neighborhood. If you live here, yeah. Where you live here? <laughs> right. You live here? You're going to keep asking me the same yeah, question yeah, over, and over, and yeah. over and over and over and over and over. This man following me. This is harassment, right? Mm -hmm. That's harassment, right? This, that's harassment, right? I think what you did to my wife, yes. Yeah, look, 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 look. <laughs> he followed me. You yeah. read it up. Yes, he lives there. He absolutely lives there. And he doesn't have to answer to anybody who decides to profile him. He doesn't have to. The fuck is y'all following me? Why, man, you don't, you don't tell me why the fuck I should not, I should be? You better watch yourself. <laughs> I don't even want to like, I can't even be comfortable because look at this shit. Mm -hmm. And y'all like, y'all coming up the, rock, the block, the walk, the block away from people, they trying to walk and shit with their kids. These people out here following me and shit. Yeah. This, this ain't weird. This ain't, look at the neighborhood creepers. <laughs> the neighborhood creepers. Damn. Damn. What the fuck? The buddy, look at buddy, he's still creeping. Yo. Yo, it's that serious, huh? What the fuck? <laughs> hey, that's some weary shit, my boy. Damn. <laughs> I should create problems and shit. This shit wild as fuck. Hey, better. I have to be honest, this video does not surprise me. While it is crazy and horrifying, uh, it does not surprise me that this man here pulled out a weapon. He wanted to end his life for merely walking and existing. I'm not surprised with this video because I've seen so many videos like this. 
I've heard of so many stories like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, if this is surprising to you, what planet have you been living on? Have you heard of a boy named Trayvon Martin? Have you heard of Ahmed Aubrey? This is not uncommon. In fact, I've even covered a video about this very thing a couple years ago. It was called Oral and Boogers. It was about Howard Oral Hughes and Donald Corsi in Sanford, Florida, same place Trayvon Martin was murdered, where they decided that a black kid who was driving through their neighborhood, because he was visiting a friend, he, he had every right to be there, but they decided because he was going too fast that it was okay for them to throw a landscaping stone through his car window while he was driving, almost killing him. What? And then surrounding him, this kid yelling and cursing at him, and even one person had a gun on them, just like in this video here. Now, I didn't have a chance to identify everybody in this video because I put my full attention on identifying Steve here, the one who pulled out the weapon, and I don't even want to imagine what he was planning to do. If it wasn't for his friend having a moment of clarity and jumping in and getting between them, we all know what would have happened. Same thing that happened to Trayvon Martin. Same thing that happened to Ahmed Arbery. Hello, Stephen Carrega. Why did you draw a gun on him? Mm. I bet they did. Yo, I stay away from Florida. Timberland. Now the Timberland Company, which was founded by Jeff U, Jeffrey Schwartz, right, shoemaker, things of that nature, in 1952. Right, and <clears throat> if you're looking at the symbol of Timberland, it's a tree, it is a tree. But what that tree actually personify as that tree personify as your ancestors being lich. Right, it was a public crucifixion that was actually going on. Now we have Timberland's CEO or someone affiliated to Timberlands, declaring that they do not want black people wearing their shoes. This gentleman has said that when he first designed Timber Timberland shoes, it was meant for the construction site, it was meant for the barnyard, and black people have done nothing but dirty it up by wearing it it's the most ridiculous thing he's ever seen with black people wearing these boots in hot weather. You deserve it. You deserve that insult. And you're going to constantly and repeatedly be insulted because you're too damn fool. Just my thoughts. They are trying to cancel this lady for exposing your average dentist. You need to watch this next clip because you may not hear this information anywhere else. What is so good about Xylitol? So I'm going to tell you my story. Xylitol is, it's like a Xylitol sugar Xylitol is from birch. Right? It's from the birch plant we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. It's the natural, it's naturally found in plants. So it's that birch, you know what they're whipping? Yeah. It's from that plant. Many studies have shown that it kills uh, anaerobic bacteria like Streptococcus coctus mutans that cause um, cavities and dental decay. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the dentist and he's like, you've got two cavities. And I was like, how the hell do I have cavities? I don't need sugar. Like, so he goes, you have two cavities. They're at the point of no return where, you know, like you, they're, I guess they penetrate the enamel a certain amount and they're like, you have to, you have to like get them out. The way I am is I always like to like look into everything before I do anything. I told him, I'm like, I'm gonna do some reading research and see if I can find, you know, if there's any, you know, possibility that I don't have to like get a filling, right? I was like looking through everything, all my toiletries and everything, I'm like, what do I have to get rid of? What's in there that could be harmful? And so I was like, fluoride, like in my toothpaste. So I was like, I don't wanna use fluoride toothpaste anymore. So I came across this xylitol toothpaste. And I was like, what is this xylitol toothpaste? So I started doing research on xylitol while I was looking for alternatives. And I started doing research and then I found all these studies. And not only did I find studies that like, it, you know, basically kills these bacteria that cause cavities, the S-mutants. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna do this. I was, like, I gave myself TMJ. I chewed so much xylitol gum. So I go back to Dennis, we do the x-rays and I'm like, oh, he's gonna tell me about the stupid cavities and I haven't done the research, <laughs> you <Right>. know? <clears throat> and he goes, he comes in and he goes, 
I've never seen this before, but your cavities are gone. And he shows the x-rays and he shows me before and after. He's like, they're totally gone. And I said, the only thing that I did that I could think of is like my obsessive xylitol gum chewing, which I still do. So that is crazy. So the xylitol gum somehow, so you think that what it did was affect your, the microbiome of your mouth? Yeah. Oh, and it showed, there's also studies showing that it decreases the incidence of, I'm talking about Staphylococcus mutans because it's the only one I remember, but there's another one that causes dental decay, but it didn't affect any of the good bacteria in the mouth. The last time that I went to the dentist, they recommended me this junk. And of course, the main ingredient is fluoride and fluoride again. No bueno. And I know if you go to check your toothpaste right now in your bathroom, the main ingredient would also be fluoride with a bunch of other harsh chemicals for your mouth and your teeth. So after I listened to that lady explain her story, I decided to take it upon myself to research and one that I found, which is the highest rated, the most sold and all clean ingredients. This is called Knobs Toothpaste Tablets by Better Biome, or in other words, no BS toothpaste tablets because there are no BS toothpaste ingredients. And on top of having xylitol, this actually has 12 other key clean ingredients, just like number six here, which is nanohydroxyapatite, which remineralizes your enamel. And as you can see, all the other ingredients also let you know what they contribute to the toothpaste so you know exactly what you're putting inside your mouth. And these are toothpaste tablets. So all you have to do is pop one in your mouth, chew it for a couple of seconds, grab a wet toothbrush, and then brush like normal. Well, guys, guess we got to get some of that knobs toothpaste. No BS. I ain't never think that something can rebuild the enamel, but I think I might have a cavity. And I'm going to try some of this knobs toothpaste. But yeah, these are some of the most creepy and strange TikToks that are out there. What are these things that are falling out of the sky? I'm not sure. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe. Turn your notification bells on. And until next time, YouTube, peace.